So the title of this lesson, look at your neighbor and say, mask off. Mask off. Mask off. Now, you know, nah, 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 like, like y'all like, listen, listen. Stop acting like you don't know where that comes from. Like you know where that come from. I want you to say it with some swag. Say mask off. Mask off. I, I like that. Oh, we're gonna have a good time today. <laughs> Listen, the scripture was already read, but I'm gonna read it in a different translation. Watch this. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 2. It says, since God has so generally let us in on what he is doing, we're not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job. Because we run into occasional hard times. Watch this, here we go. We refuse to wear masks and play games. I'm gonna read that again. We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes and we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say it out in the open, the truth and the whole truth on display so that those who want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. And where the scripture comes from, Paul is on a journey. And he's on, to, he's on a journey to the Corinthian church. And he's saying, listen, I'm not going to hide all the hardships that I've been through. I'm not going to hide it from you. I'm going to keep a G. I'm going to keep it a book. And I'm not going to wear a mask. And isn't it amazing that we are at the end, basically, of 2018? Isn't that crazy? We are almost at the end of 2018. Like we are in, we're about to head into October. And you know, when you head into October, the world, they start to celebrate Halloween. You know, you start seeing decorations go up, people start buying candy, doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And, and, and the thing about Halloween is, it's the perfect opportunity to dress up and be whoever you want to be. You know the babies, they want to be Black Panther. They want to be Spider-Man, they want to be Superman, even the adults. I remember when I was in college and I had to go to this festival and it was a class requirement, but it was based around Halloween. And I went in and I was celebrating Halloween. I never did, I never trick or treated, I just never had. That's just, that didn't go down in my household. So I met, the, I met my table and my professor walks up to me and he says, Kanan, you didn't, you didn't want to dress up? I said, nah, I don't really celebrate Halloween. That's not really what I do. And he was like, that's kind of weird. That's kind of odd. I, in my head, because he's my professor, and he right. talks my grades, so I didn't want to talk. Right, right, right. I said, oh man, but I'm, in my mind, I'm like, you calling me weird, and you almost 45, and you're just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I mean in, in my mind, you know, I mean, you 45 years old, and you walk around with a helmet, and you call me weird. <laughs>
Even before you came into being, he already planned your life. Can I tell you something? You, I'll put it to you like this. The story of your life is already written, but you're trying to be an extra in somebody else's life. Your life has already been determined. It's good stuff in your life. It's real good stuff. You got your own body pick. The problem is you're not satisfied with you if you're looking at somebody else's set. And the problem is God wants to tell you on today that you are a masterpiece. Yes, sir. that was worth $10 million, right? I gave you that Picasso, and I said, listen, this is yours. I'm giving it to you. You don't owe me anything. I'm just giving it to you because I love you. When you put that Picasso up in your house, you're going to have a party about that Picasso. You're going to invite people over. You might try to clean it if you can. You're going to tell all your friends. That's all you want to do is talk about that Picasso. Wouldn't it be weird if I gave you a painting that's a Picasso and you put a cover over it? Wow. Wouldn't that be weird? That's a $10 million painting. And the thing about masterpieces is they go up over time because of the value of the painting. Y'all missed The problem is we won't do it to a Picasso, but you do it to the masterpiece that God created every single day. You cover yourself up. You try to be somebody else who God didn't call you to be. Let me say you something. Everything that God gave you, he wants to use it for his glory. Yeah. Because some people say, I'm too dark skinned, I'm too light skinned, my hair not this, my hair not that, I'm too short, I'm too this. No, 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 no. God gave you everything and he said, watch me get glory out of it. Yeah. And so many of you young people, you sit back and you look at somebody else's features and you say, oh man, I wish I, I, wish I was that tall. Or I wish I could play ball. Oh, I wish I could do this. And God is saying, hey, if you would just look at what I already put on the inside of you, you would be okay. Yeah. And, and the sad part is, y'all, I got to keep it funky. We come to church and we try to approach God with a mask. Mm. Mm. You worship from it. Mm. You give from it. But can I tell you something? God can only use the real you and not the one you pretend to be. Because the one you pretend to be, he didn't create that. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't recognize it. He wants to use you, but he can't locate you because you're wearing a mask like everybody else. You know what Adam said? You know when God asked him, where are you? You know he didn't ask him that as if he didn't know. <laughs> he knew exactly where he was. But you know what Adam did? Adam tried to cover himself up. Oh, but this is the thing. The Bible says he covered himself up with fig leaves. So he covered himself up with something that was temporary. The problem with the mask is you're going to have to continue to put it on, continue to get adjusted. When it breaks, you're going to buy a new one. you got to continue to reinvent yourself. Because whenever you lie about your identity, you got to maintain that lie. Oh my God. you got to keep it going. But if you would just be real about who God created you to be the first time, and you are not what Instagram says, you are not what Facebook says, you are not what Love and Hip Hop says, you are exactly who Jesus created you to be. Because we live in a generation now where young people are committing suicide because they don't have the amount of followers. I saw a, um, I saw a news article yesterday, and Kanye West, he put out a uh, text message with the guy on Twitter. And this is what he said. He said what he wants to do is he wants to get up with the guy from Twitter and he wants to he wants to make sure that nobody sees how many followers he has anymore. Because what he's saying is the reason why a lot of people are committing suicide is because they're trying to get a million followers and they only got 10. Can I tell you something? You know Jesus only had 12. Six. 
is never gonna show when you lose. Come on, man. But can I tell you something? Even before you had an Instagram account, there was the cross and you won. Even before people thought that you lost. Look at your neighbor and say, NASCAR. Watch this. So, there are, there are four masks that we gotta talk about. And I promise you that most people in this room, everybody has dealt with one of these masks. And on today, by the Spirit of God, you're going to come out of it. Y'all ready? Yes. Say it real loud, mask off. mask off. The first mask is the mask of the shadow. The mask of the shadow. You see, most of us, the reason why we wear a mask is because we literally live our entire lives in somebody else's shadow. Some of us, whether we had a big sister, whether we had a big brother, even if it's our parents, even if it's some type of mentor or something, you lived your whole life in somebody else's shadow. Even in some relationships, you in a shadow. But can I tell you something? The reason why the devil wants to throw shade is because he knows how bright you shine. Yeah. And Satan knows that if I let this light shine, then that's going to put him to Jesus. So what I got to do to them, I got to find somebody to look at them and say, hey, you're not good enough. It's even to the point some of y'all probably like, you don't even really know what you like because somebody always told you what you like. Come on, man. Oh, I'm being real to you. You don't know what's your favorite color because somebody told you. That's right. You don't know what type of food you like because somebody told you. Oh, I'm about to mess you up. You probably dating the wrong person because somebody recommended them to you. Samuel. 
where David was about to fight Goliath, right? And Saul was like, bro, how you gonna beat Goliath? And he was like, well, I fought a lion and I fought a bear. And the same guy that delivered me from that will deliver me from this, right? Okay. This is what happened though. Saul said, bro, you can't fight him, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna give you some armor. <laughs> and he gave him some armor, but the problem was, bro, the armor was too big. <laughs> And the Bible says that David was a small cat. He was real small, so he put the armor on, he couldn't do nothing. And, and he said, Saul, bro, I can't, I can't fight like this. I'm gonna have to just go on the Spirit of God. And the problem is you laughing, but some of you, you're going to work like this. Some of you going to school every single day like this. And the reason why you can't win a battle is because you're trying to fight your war in somebody else's arm. Oh, 
Your next business adventure, adventure, business adventure, business venture, <laughs> could come from somebody that you don't like. <laughs> and you could be connecting with them, but you so busy beefing with them. You so busy going back and forth with them. You so busy talking about them. When you can actually be collaborating with them and then both y'all can come up. That's right. But both y'all compare one another. What God has for you is completely for you. Completely for you. The next thing it does, comparison, it kills your creativity. All you young people in here, God has called you to do something crazy. He has called you to change the world some type of way. But the reason why you can't be creative is because you keep looking at somebody else's creativity. Yes, right. You keep looking at somebody else. God has given you, let me tell you something. Every single one of you, all you young people, listen to me. All you young people, you're a genius at something. Yeah. You're a genius at something. You see what I mean? I was not a genius at that. Don't like it. Never will. Never have. But listen, in, in sports, I, I always made the team, but whenever I got there on the floor, I always fumbled. Like, I always, like, made a turtle. I was always good enough to make the team, but I could never, like, actually execute. But it was always something about when I got in front of people, it was easy. Like, whenever I had to do a report, it was easy. Like, people would be like, oh my God, I got to do a report. But like, no, this is easy. Man, like, all I got to do is stand up here and talk. That's it. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's literally it. But you know, public speaking is one of the number one fears. Yeah. But for me, it just came natural. And once I got into it, I became creative. This is the thing, young people. Once you find your gift, you're walking your grace. Yeah. Once you, listen, I'm gonna tell you how you know something easy. When it just come natural to you and you just walk in. You just walk in. I mean, yes, you can perfect it. Yes, you can get better at it. But it's just natural to you. It just come like that. That's how you know you're walking in your gift. The problem is you can't be creative. It's because you keep looking at somebody else's gift. Yeah. And you wear that mask. And the problem is you trying to wear somebody else's mask and it don't fit. It does not fit you. And you wasting so much time and you put on that same mask every single day. And the thing about a mask that don't fit, if it's too small, you can still see the skin. <laughs> And everybody looking at you crazy, like, bro, you know, you know, you know you're wearing a mask, right? Like, you know, you know that don't fit. It's the same thing with your anointing. You know what my grandma always told me? She said, okay, King, if you call in the ministry, that's fine. But you better make sure you're one of those pastors who was sent and didn't just win. I was so I was so good with just being number two. I had no intention of starting a church. Had no intention. But when God has called you, He'll make the provision. And let me tell you this: some of you in this room, you waiting on a check, you waiting on some money, you waiting on somebody to fund your vision. But this is the thing: you gotta have a clear vision before there is the provision. You don't need the provision if you don't have a vision. And this lines up with it because most of you don't have a vision for your life because you're looking at somebody else's. And you keep trying to get into an industry that what God didn't call you. It's okay if you're not the next Beyonce. It's okay if you're not the next pastor. It's okay. You might just be somebody who has a job and is blessing people on that job. God can bless you here. He can give you promotion. And you just need to be cool with you. I'm still growing, but I'm so cool with me, bro. I'm just so cool with me. Because for years, I tried to be somebody that I wouldn't. Amen. Try to dress like them, try to do this and that. I'm just so cool with me, my dog. I just really am. I like myself. I, I really do. I really do. I'm not like perfect. I'm not, but I'm gonna tell you, the person who I like the most is Jesus living on the inside of me. Jesus on the inside of you, he'll work all that stuff out. You'll say, God, why you give me this big nose? I gave it to you because there's somebody else with a big nose and you're going to stop them from committing suicide. Wow. Well, God, why you make me this height? Well, I made you that height. 
was because somebody gonna see and say, you know what? I don't need to drive my car off a cliff because if he can make it and he my height and we got the same thing in common, I can make it too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God does nothing on the accident. Right. Yeah. Everything that's on the inside of you is there on purpose. Yeah. That's right. It's right there. There is no need to compare yourself to anybody. All you young people, listen. Social media is gonna make you see. It's gonna make it seem like all you need to do is just do this. You get more likes. And listen, it, it's it's so exhausting. You know, the, you know the best thing you can do. Can, can, can I can I can I actually do something real quick? You got an iPhone, right? Okay. You see that button on the side? On this side? Yeah. Like, press it like real, real hard. What happens? Turn it off. Yeah. You wanna know solve most of your problems? Just turn it off. Just, 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 just for five minutes. That's why some of y'all keep getting new iPhone, iPhone this every single, every single month. Because it ain't because you want the new phone. Right? Okay. I 
never did something great. Rock them, okay? Isn't there like a, a marriage, a married bad system? And based on the activity that you do, you get a badge. And when you get that badge, you put it on your vest. Well, we, 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 we kind of do the same thing in church. I read my Bible today, you see my badge. I gave a hundred dollars badge. Look what I did, badge. But the only problem is, bro, we never open the vest to see what's on the inside. And it's a whole bunch of mess on the inside. But let me tell you what Grace is. Grace says, Jesus said, listen, you couldn't live up to my standard, but I defeated the cross and I rose back up and I'm going to get you the badge that I earned and you can wear it free. You can wear it free. That's what the grace of God does. It's this unearned, unmerited faith. And the reason why you can't walk in it it's because you're still trying to earn it. Mm -hmm. It's right. yours. Amen. It's a free gift. Yeah. Yeah. And the one of the reasons why people don't want to come to church is because they know we're not going to be real. That's right. People are going through real problems. Yeah. But every time they show up, you keep judging them. Yeah. 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 And what's so sad is we go through real stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. 
good. You trapped in a relationship that you want to get out of, and the only reason you're in it is because that's the only way you're going to get a hug. You trapped in it. Listen, I know the game. I know it. You trapped in a relationship. You go to sleep at night, and don't nobody know that secret that you was molested, that you was raped, and don't nobody know. And you hide it. And that's the reason why you're promiscuous. And you know, I'm gonna tell you something else what we do. We never get to the root of the issue. Let me tell you something. When it comes to young people, I don't care if you don't speak to me. I don't care if you mean, I don't care about none of that. I wanna know why you mean. I wanna know why you don't wanna speak. I wanna know, I don't care about none of that. I wanna know what's the issue at home. Because if I deal with the root, then the fruit will change. Yeah. But we don't take long enough to deal with the, to deal with the root. Amen. And people come in church with baggage. And we sit there and judge them. And we don't hold them long enough. Because if you hold them long enough, the Holy Ghost will say, whisper in her ear in her, a prophetic word. Tell her she's going to be all right. Yeah. Tell her she's going to be OK. Yeah, I know she's single with 10 kids, but it's going to be all right. Yeah. yeah, I know she's doing this, she's doing that. Yeah, I know he's got a jail, but it's going to be all right. Amen. But we don't want to be real with ourselves, so we can't be real with nobody else. Right. Religion. And we carry burdens around. And Jesus is saying, if you would just give them to me, and watch this, this is what he said. He says, watch this. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. Because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. It's an easy burden because he carried it. Yes. There's one more mask, and I'm done. Some of you, you still carrying, you still wearing the mask of your past. You can't let it go. Everywhere you go, you talk about it. But you know, I went through this 10 years ago. I went through this five years ago. You pick your friends based on your brokenness. Wow. Wow. Some of you, you worship God when you're broken. Can I challenge that? The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for you have been saved by grace through faith. That word saved in the Greek is sozo. That word sozo means whole. It means complete. It means healed. How can you worship God from something that you no longer identify with? There is nothing like a worship from a place of confirmation. Amen. You don't worship God from your issue. You worship God who He gave you to be in Christ. Yes. But the reason why you can't do it is because you're still operating your brokenness. I can't tell you something. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 17 that when you're in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things passed away. Oh, the moment you came into Christ, Oh, old things become new. Yes. The moment you got saved, I don't care if you got saved at 12. If you got saved at 12, your whole life is new. Yes. Well, Kenan, what if, what, what if, I, if I sin? New. Well, Kenan, what if I got an addiction? New. Because God sent Jesus to pay the payment of sin that you could pay. And the Bible says in heaven we have redemption and we have the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Oh, I'm forgiven. And then you try to judge somebody else for their mess. If God forgave you, you can forgive somebody else. And most importantly, you gotta let what happened to you go. I didn't say it was gonna be easy. I didn't say it wasn't gonna have, you're gonna have moments when you still cry, but let it go. Just give it to Jesus. And this is the thing that I love. Even in the midst of the stuff that was my fault, and the stuff that I chose to do, I ain't talking about the little symbols. I'm talking about the stuff that you knew was wrong and you did it anyway. Yeah. Like when God told you to leave that relationship and you went back yeah. anyway. Yeah. And you stayed that longer than what you intended to. You know the whole time he was saying, I still love you. Yeah. And I'm still there. Yeah. The Bible says that he would never leave you nor forsake you. Even in the times where you don't think you're lovable, he still loves you. Yes. Even when you're not good, he still yes. Even when I was unfaithful, I'm talking about me, he was still faithful. Yes. There's nothing like the faithfulness of God. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I don't even from my perspective. The faithfulness of God when I was unfaithful, when I still did stuff I had no business doing, He still made it, He still made it my business to be there for me. Take off the mask. Why are you still wearing it? Why? He gave you your own identity. Why are you still wearing it? The mask of your past, take it off. The mask of comparison, take it off. The mask of the shadow, take it off. Because the moment you take it off, is the moment that Jesus will give you peace. 